I think, I mean, the SEC is obviously all about protecting investors and our markets. One of our very strongest, most resilient tools you know, is the Investment Advisors Act. I mean, it has just not only stood the test of time, but it's adapted to uh, evolving markets, you know, more and more investors, particularly retail investors, coming into the markets, being responsible you know, for their own investors. So it's, it's just a, you know, a huge success story, obviously something you continue to work at to be sure that it remains as strong as it's been. You know, that set of principles-based standards, if we can call it that, it couldn't be stronger. Uh, and I think what we do at the SEC, and our duty to do at the SEC, you know, is to apply that in a very rigorous way that both protects investors and allows the, you know, the asset management industry to develop as it has, as a very vibrant, you know, diverse marketplace. SEC registered advisors alone, uh, you know, oversee, in effect, uh, $67 trillion uh, of assets uh, under management. I think there were, what, 51 firms, advisory firms, in 1940 when the act was passed. Uh, and, and now, obviously, you know, we, we, we have 11,600 that we're responsible for. That doesn't even mention those registered, uh, you know, with the states. But, but, but the, the sort of the, the compass of that act uh, is its, obviously, its anti-fraud provisions, which are in the act, holding advisors to that standard, and the fiduciary duty standard. The word fiduciary is not in the act. I think both, frankly, the courts and the SEC. Uh, have defined that standard uh, per, by, through guidance in court decisions and rulemakings, uh, again based on the anti-fraud authority in the case of the Commission, through our enforcement cases. I mean, obviously the, you know, the judicial case that gets all the attention is the 1963 one in capital gains uh, that made clear that you know, advisors have a duty of uh, good faith, of reasonable care, full and fair disclosure. And then using that, you know, again, the anti-fraud provisions of the Act through our enforcement cases have also made it very clear that you know, when advisors uh, you know, don't live up to those strong standards in the Advisors Act, that, that we, will, we will proceed and hold them to that standard. If you don't, obviously you know, the standard can become diluted. So we bring cases, failure to disclose conflict of interest, uh, misallocation of uh, unfair allocations of trading opportunities, um, and, and in many other areas. And it's enormously important that whatever your title is, when you are acting as an advisor, that you adhere to that best interest of the client standard. My vision of a uniform fiduciary duty would be a codified, principles-based standard rooted in the Investment Advisors Act. And the reason that that is my point of view is of how strong that standard has been. So the SEC is all about is, uh, you know, protecting investors in the markets, and one of our most powerful tools for 75 years has been the Investor Advisor Act, and I envision that it will be for the next 75 and beyond.